You're now live, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, so welcome, everyone, to uh, this meeting of the River Wine Nutrient Management Board. So I'm Councillor Alyssa Swinglehurst, and I chair the board. Um, we've still got people joining, um, and I'm hoping that somewhere we will be joined by James Hitchcock from Radnorshire Radnish Wildlife Trust. Excuse me, Radnorshire Wildlife Trust. It's not a meeting yet, I don't think. Uh, and also Sarah James from Farm Cymru. Um, they're welcome to attend the meeting and, and what will happen, um, it, you know, they're welcome to join in, but if uh, we, we can uh, admit them to membership under any other business if the board is content to do so. Um, the, the, uh, the, the sensible argument being, obviously, that, that this is a Welsh-English board and therefore we should have the Welsh equivalent of our uh, English organisations also um, invited to join the board if they, if they wish to. Um, Right, so moving on, um, I'm welcoming a, a few new faces. Uh, I think we have David Gillam uh, in for Tom Tibbetts, who gave his apologies, and I also have had apologies from Simon Evans. Um, do we have any other apologies that anyone's aware of? Uh, Councillor Sid Phelps has given his okay. apologies. Um, and some Councillor Chris uh, McFarlane standing in for Councillor Phelps. Uh, Martin okay. Williams has given his apologies. And Richard Tyler. Oh yeah, sorry, it's Richard Tyler that David Gillum's in for, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should not have relied on my unreliable memory there. Okay, that's great. Welcome, Chris, as well um, to the meeting. Um, okay, so first item underway is the notes of the last meeting and any matters arising. Um, I haven't been notified of any uh, matters of accuracy. Or uh, and, and there's nothing that's arising that isn't elsewhere on the agenda, as far as I can see. Uh, is, is everyone content to to note the the last set of minutes as as um, accurate? Okay, I'm not getting not getting any objections, so we'll go with that. Thanks very much, uh, everyone. And just um, as you speak, if you could just say who you are, uh, it would be really helpful for the note taker and for any members of the public who are watching. Um, just just so that they uh, they know who who who's who and you know how it all fits together. Um, okay, I've got that, Claire. Thank you. Public questions. Um, thank you very much, to those members of the public who uh, gave us written questions in advance of the meeting um, and have received written answers. I'm aware of one outstanding response from NRW, which um, I, I assume will be um, will be coming on. Uh, in the fullness of time. Uh, I think it was quite a complex question. So uh, is that right, Anne? Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Alyssa. So that was the question um, from Christine Hugh-Jones about sort of monitoring for sort of pesticides. Um, but I'm in the, I'm just waiting for yeah. some, something to come back on that, but I'll, I'll send that as soon as I've got it. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. And if you could uh, copy in the um, the board to response, because actually it's quite, I thought it was an interesting question. Um, so I'll send that would it to be great. Henry, Thank you. And ask Henry to circulate it. Yeah, send it to Henry and he can yeah. still send it out. Thanks, Henry. That would be great. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. That's lovely. Uh, Christine. Uh, hello. Yes, this was a question to the EA as well. Um, maybe uh, that was a bit hidden, but it, it, it was to the EA as well. Can I jump in, Alyssa? Yes. I was just yeah, of course, Martin. Yeah. yeah, I was just going to acknowledge that, yes, similar, similar to Anne, we will provide a response just because of the timers. We haven't been able to get it from the team in yeah. time, but we will make yeah. sure that you've got the position and picture for both England and Wales. Brilliant. Thanks. That's lovely. Thanks very much, Martin. Thanks, Christine. Mary? Um, I didn't have time to reply to Alison's um, questions from yesterday, but I will do so and happy to send to Henry um, yeah, that'd be great for completeness. If all the answer, if if all the answers come via Henry, and then they can um, yeah. go out to all board members and uh, and 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 if and if anyone asking a question wants a wants a specific person to respond, please make that clear. Otherwise, any board member might respond. I've uh, had a few people mention that they didn't know they could ask questions, Alyssa. So I think we need to work out how we yeah. make that clear. Absolutely. And actually, board members do not need to ask questions since they're on the board. They're welcome to ask questions, but they can also ask them in the normal run of things um, anyway, and indeed between meetings. 
Um, so, okay, that's great. So thank you very much for that. Um, update on activity. Again, thank you very much for those members and organisations who sent in a written update. Uh, we have written updates from uh, Monmouthshire, Paris, Natural Resources Wales and the Environment Agency, uh, as well as the slide pack from the statutory oversight group, uh, which also sits later in the agenda. So we can discuss it here or later, I, you know, um, it's fine. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments about the written updates that have been submitted? Mary. Um, just to say, have we got a way of saying who we're expecting written updates from so that every meeting we know that we will be expected to read 10 documents, whatever it might be, that might be helpful. Um, and I've got some specific queries on some of the written reports, but it might be better that they're resolved through emails because they're quite complicated. Um, so, for example, but there's some basic things like, um, it would be good to know the person who attended the meetings, not just the agency, because we're aware of who the agencies are. Um, and then uh, what outcomes they have agreed themselves, not just the things that they discussed at that meeting, what outcomes have they got going forward? Um, but yeah. other things, I think we probably need just to work on the communication between the different tiers of the group, mindful that we're the public interface. Sure. But I I don't feel like I have any real concept of what's happening on the other tiers. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I think it might be, we, we used to have a template for these reports. Um, it might be useful to to go back to that as a starting point. So everyone has a sort of similar, um, you know, set of things to look at. I, I suppose any member of the board is is welcome to put in an update. The updates, however, are not kind of random things that you've done, but things that you've done that might be delivering an objective of the plan. Um, so, you know, on that basis, yeah. and, and it, you know, I don't think we, we should be too prescriptive about who gives the updates, um, but that's the sort of general... It's only because they all came through separately, and then the EA one yeah. and the Natural England one were very similar. So obviously they're, a, they're actually a SOG update they're not an ea natural england update but then there were some good other bits of interest in the ea update which i would have liked to have had more information about so it's just okay. how do we how do we perform our role as the nutrient management part of this new system yeah rather than feeling like we're being told what happened but then it didn't actually kind of move forward if that makes sense is make sure hopefully yeah, I think it's set, people reporting. Set, setting the level of detail um is is possibly what we're talking about here. Um and, and what's the constructive way of doing that? I'm gonna talk gonna go to Emma now, who's got her hand up. And I yeah, think good afternoon. Um so I'm currently chairing the SOG. Thanks, Alyssa. Uh, Emma Johnson, Natural England. So I think we we got a bit um not constrained by the moving of the NMB because we set our SOG dates to be sufficiently in advance of the NMB so that we could get organised. But the intention is that you get, the NMB gets one slide pack that has all our relevant updates. Um, it didn't quite happen as smoothly <laughs> as it would have done. And because Easter in the middle and, the, and the, the meeting being brought forward, we didn't get the editing done in time either. But the intention mm -hmm. is that there will be one update from us. So we, we just hopefully you'll get into better pattern now. Okay, that's that's really helpful. Okay. Uh yeah, we sorry, we we had to change the date because um it it it, sure. it, yeah. it, it, yeah, it clashed with the catchment partnership, but there's just too many people on both to, to make that make any sense. I also see we have Simon in the room who I'd thought wasn't gonna come. So that's nice. Hi Simon. Do you, do you want to pipe up at this point? Okay. Um, if you want to bring me in, I just I took the chance to refresh myself with the nutrient management plan this morning, and I just just wanted to. There, there, has it been edited since two thousand and twenty one? Um, is my question because there seems to be figures in there from that came out of the water company about twenty two, twenty three that have been included in there, but a viral roadmap hasn't gone into there, and I'm just trying to work out um, whether we can have uh, if it is a live document that's being edited we can have a date of last update on it so that we can actually see when we look at it what's happening and what the updates are on it yeah 
That's a really good idea. I don't know who's doing the updating. It's the, I think that's a, I think that's something that we we need to uh, arrive at a point of agreement on today. Uh, Emma, Martin. Okay, I was going to say we ha we have covered that in the SOG update. So I don't know if you want to take that then or now. Okay, let's take it in the SOG update. Okay, then, right. then if that's okay, yeah, if we can touch back on that because I think that's also about how this functions going forward and make sure that. That um that, that that we know that that the 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 dynamism of the plan isn't lost that we do keep updating it and moving it ahead. We could also look at that. We've got another agenda item looking at the current plan and the delivery of the current plan, which might also be a place for that conversation. Um, that's great. Thanks, uh, Andrew. Hi. Um, I was really going to um reiterate part of what uh, Mary said. Um, uh, I, I, I know that um, it was taken um, last time um, that I said, why haven't we got proper minutes from meetings? Why don't we know who's attended? Uh, and why don't we now have action points from the meeting? We've got comments, but we don't seem to have action points. Um, uh, so we don't know who's going away to do what. Um, uh, and we don't know who attended. I think it's important we know who attended um, for the simple reason that if there's one body who isn't attending, I think we need to know about it because we all have an obligation to uh, give our parts to this. So I'd like to see that. Um, I'd like to see much more formality in that respect. Um, and I'd like to just understand we seem to have got an enormous amount of um, commentary, but I don't see that we're heading towards uh, taking Simon's point, uh, an updated nutrient management plan. And I'd like to know what the proposal is to actually get to uh, an updated nutrient management plan and who's going to be doing it and who's responsible for it. Um, and I've got one further point, which uh, I'd like to understand more fully. Um, does the tag still operate or has that been disbanded for task and finish groups? Uh, I'd like to know what that position is. And, and if it has been disbanded for task and finish groups, who decided that? Right. Uh, Martin, got a hand up. So I'll, I'll pick up sort of the points that Andrew has raised. I think we'll probably talk about the nutrient management plan update as that separate agenda item rather than covering it now. Otherwise, I think it'll become a bit piecemeal. It, it, just to confirm that there will be a, a fully sort of minuted version of the SOG. The uh, one of our secretaries is doing that now. I did have a chat with her this morning. So so there will be that in terms of that last action where Andrew in the last meeting requested that you know, who's going, what 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 was the topics of conversation? And and like Mary also said around the um, the outcomes or the actions from that. So therefore, there's that that greater transparency and, and clarity around the um, th that meeting and how it perhaps relates back into to this group here. Um, we'll pick up the nutrient management plan later on. And in terms of the, the tag, stroke task and finish groups, what I think we need to acknowledge is that we don't have dedicated resources on, on the why. So whilst we have used some of our funding to create posts to, to lead on the why, that is not a standalone budget, if you like. So what that does mean is, is when we do say our regulatory work on the why, that means we're prioritising it as as an as a West Midlands area <laughs> rather than it being bespoke. So so con consequently, when we had the the tag, so the task and finish group. If you recall, about 18 months ago, we had sort of these six groups that were, were established. But what we struggled to is resource them because you end up with a large number of groups which are less effective merely because you've not got the people to actually lead them and drive them forward. So the reason why we felt that a task and finish group was more appropriate and to a certain extent, we call it task and finish group. You, you could call it a tag. Effectively, they should achieve the same thing. Now, the reason why we talk about task and finish is because I think sometimes when we had a tag group, like the subgroup, there was no specific objective or goal that, that was trying to achieve. So to a certain extent, you could have a, a subgroup that went on and on and on without a clear outcome. So the task and finish approach is, is to be more discreet. So we say, what is the, the technical expertise we require? What's the objective and what is the outcome of that? And that's why you'll see in one of the papers, it talks about the nutrient management tool, which went to the SOG in terms of 
pausing that piece of work, that means that that task and finish group will no longer continue whilst we evaluate what other tools are being developed. So that, that's the reason behind it, partly resourcing and partly to make sure that they're, they're much more focused and achieving objectives. Thanks. Thanks, Martin. Can I, um, can I just come back uh, on that? Yeah. yeah. To say, um, uh, I thank Martin for saying that we are going to get correct minutes and, and that's going to be or, or better minutes. I think that's fantastic. Um, and um, I certainly understand the um, reasoning behind the um, change from tag to task and finish. What I'd have liked to have seen was that had been brought to this meeting to say this was going to happen at the last meeting so that we do I, I just think that's that's all important is how do we get to know these things i'm not uh, suggesting that the decision wasn't correct i'm simply saying how do we ensure that this information gets to us in the future ahead of time but thank you martin for that full response okay thanks thanks andrew uh, mary yeah thank you for explaining martin that makes sense just one um i don't know observation it, does it make sense though that if the agencies if you chose a kind of list of things you think might meaningfully reduce phosphorus in the catchment, could you not then narrow those down with your with the expertise and the data that we already all have access to, and then pick from those actions you think will deliver the greatest or the simplest or the quickest or the most cost effective, whatever way you want to measure them, and then give those to specific peoples, either in your in, in your agencies or to the private sector, to number crunch and make certain in scientific and legal terms, so that we're not all kind of, I mean, if, if you do them, like the nutrient loss tool is a really good example, it was identified as a priority, and then post discussion, it turns out it's not viable. So then it's been dropped. But in the meantime, we've lost all that time, or we could have been looking at other ways of quantifying phosphorus reductions because really that's quite a simple thing we need to reduce the amount of phosphorus in the catchment getting into the water and we know probably there's a pretty good range of actions that will do that we just need to know which to put into the plan and which to facilitate quickly or slowly or whatever you want whichever way you want to deliver the restoration Mark. If I come back on that chair yeah. I'll try and keep keep it brief. It's sort of, um, and we can perhaps take a conversation or, or offline too. Now, the 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 re, the, re, the reason why we've paused the task and finish group for say nutrient tool is because we we got relevant partners in the catchment together to to make sure that decision wasn't just made by one organisation. It had to be be more collaborative. Now, it's not stopped. It's paused. Because what, what we felt is, is that if we pursued it, we could either be pursuing a tool which isn't, isn't as effective as it could be once the technology or the um, intelligence is, is more advanced. But also it means that we can use our resources elsewhere. And in terms of I think where we go to next, the review of the nutrient management plan, and I say stroke DWPP, the Diffuse Water Pollution Plan, will will involve an options appraisal now the options appraisal that forms part of that should start to inform what task and finish stroke tag groups we're gonna gonna need to take forward so hopefully i think what we'll see as part of this sort of process we're working through is something which is much more credible in terms of making sure we're taking the right objectives forward and having some form of prioritization in terms of outcome stroke benefit but perhaps we can take that offline if we need to but we can talk perhaps further when we get onto the relevant section around the the nutrient management plan okay thank you um i have a couple of questions um on the nlw update bullet point three eight high-risk farms have been inspected it would be interesting to know out of how many um and i wondered if that related to the um, the answer to the public question um, of uh, inspection of 800 farms. So is it eight of 800 farms? Or is it a subset? The question for NRW. You're on mute, David. 
Oh, I don't like Zoom. Um, yeah, sorry, Alyssa. Thank you. Oh, David. It's David Lee from NRW. Um, yeah, that's eight out of the 800. They right, have a okay. target of visiting or inspecting 800 farms in Wales this year. They're mm -hmm. obviously, in effect, targeting big dairy farms. So there's not so many of those in the Y. There's a lot on the USK. There's a lot on the Tyvee and the D. And so they're, they're just targeting those going through the list and that was eight in the Y catchment dairy farms that they'd visited since Christmas. Okay, thanks, David. Um, and then the uh, Monmouthshire um, plan for rivers and oceans, it, it, as and when that kind of comes about, I'd be interested to see a copy that could be shared. Um, Catherine, this sounds like a good thing. Christine. Uh, yes, I was just thinking in relation to the farms visited, there was something in the NRW reply about the pig farms visited, but I wasn't at all sure on, on what basis the information that everything was okay was collected because these farms will have never had most of them because they were kind of came in under the radar as pig farms, they will never have had a, a manure management plan. So did NRW okay. look at what was happening to the disposal of the slurry? And is NRW sort of uh, concentrating in any way on those farms with respect to the notification procedure for, for farms which are not able to uh, keep up with the new uh, lower spreading rates in the uh, agricultural pollution regs. Okay, so that, that, that's, that's like a, a subset question um, rather than a comment on the um, agenda item that we're on at the moment, which is agenda item three update on activity. Um, however, it's a good question. So um, if, if LSW could take that away and, and mull it over and, and let us know, then that would be... Uh, that would be great if that's okay. I don't expect an answer right here and now. Um, and what and, and capturing what I was saying to you is, I'd like a copy of the uh, Monmouthshire County Council's um, riv Rivers and Oceans Plan. Um, just be interested to see that. I mean, other board members might be interested as well, but I know I am. Um, I'm also going to give a verbal update from Heritage Council. Um, so Heritage Council has now adopted the Minerals and Waste local plan um, and the policies within that plan are designed to help to support delivering nutrient neutrality or betterment within the SAC. Uh, clearly the plan pertains to minerals and waste, not to uh, everything, um, but it has taken account of the aims of other documents relating to river water quality, uh, such as the nutrient management plan and uh, so let's hope that that it will support the objectives of the of the nutrient management plan. Um, the there is a policy requirement for nutrient neutrality to be demonstrated for development proposals located within the River Y SAC or the River Clun SAC um, for waste developments, as it were. So developments that fall under the plan, um, and that does include. Uh, agriculture within policy W3, um, which will, there's an expectation that that, 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 that will be um, best practice for water protection and waste management in proportion to the development proposed um, and the holding on which it is located. Um, and uh, this is currently the, the, the subject of a pre-action letter from uh, NFU. We have the new local plan, which is similarly, um, you know, looking at policies to support the objectives of the nutrient management plan. Uh, and that's currently at regulation 18 consultation stage. Heritage Council has also uh, moved ahead with the decision to uh, build more wetlands 
Um, and so they will be coming forward with, uh, as a way of mitigating uh, phosphate for housing and delivering 20% betterment to the river. Um, and it's only appropriate to note at this point that that's, that's funded, uh, you know, in the end, as it were, by the purchase of phosphate credits by house builders who are therefore um, paying not only for their offsetting, but also for the 20% betterment for the river. Uh, the wetland at Luston, which is our first wetland, has been shortlisted for two industry awards and will have a, a official opening in May. So that's um, that's a good news thing. Um, the Cabinet Commission is still meeting. Uh, we'll continue to provide cross-border local authority cooperation and we'll look to opportunities to increase liaison with both governments and to do, as it were, the political asking uh, of both governments. And the Commission reserves the right to function as a scrutiny panel uh, in relation to the works of the board. The uh, Heritage Council Scrutiny Committee, the Environment and Sustainability Scrutiny Committee, specifically has had two sessions regarding water quality and the Nutrient Management Board. And the recommendations of this committee can be seen on the uh, Heritage Council website. Um, that there was clearly um, frustration with the pace of progress and uh, a reiteration of the need to consider a, a WPZ water protection zone for the river. Uh, we also had a session with the scrutiny management, the scrutiny committee for adult wellbeing, who had a task and finish group looking at the uh, potential health impacts of the intensive poultry industry. Um, the, the recommendations of that committee and the executive response are on the website. Uh, I attended the fourth of the first minister's summits. Um, there's a report later in the in on this agenda about that. Um, but this was the last summit that will be chaired by Mark Drakeford. And I just wanted to say that um, I, th I think he's to be commended for the determination with which um, he's approached the Sack River problems in Wales and the kind of political grip um, that's come about in the uh, in these summits. Um, and the action plan is is in uh, on this agenda as uh, agenda item nine. Oh, and that's it for me. Has anybody else got any other updates that, that they would like to make verbally? Andrew. But mine's more a question, uh, Chair. Um, we've got updates from, from many, many uh, parts here, but um, there doesn't appear to be a farming update. Um, surely the farming industry um, is equally concerned about the um, situation of pollution in the Y catchment. Um, and I'd have loved to have actually had an update as to what they're doing to start to ease the problem. Um, uh, I, I know Martin's not here, uh, but, but I think we've got somebody representing farming here. I'd just like to know, could we not have uh, an agricultural update for these meetings? I, I can only issue the invite. <laughs> but uh, thank you for that point. Uh, oh, Jamie Audley. Thanks, Lisa. Um... Hi, Jamie. Just a question linked to your scrutiny meetings, if I may. So uh, if we cast our mind back to the kind of governance and changes, yeah, there was at one point a discussion that this, this uh, uh, hypothesis that we could kind of kill off this meeting and you would hold the process to account via scrutiny. So I just wondered if you might remind us, what are we, what are we going to do differently from scrutiny and why should we exist? Uh, just as I get back into being part of this post uh, governance change approach. Yeah, but scru scrutiny has a completely different function to this board. Okay, so just remind us what it is and what you. No, th well, this board is to, to oversee the delivery of a plan, and scrutiny's function is to is is to scrutinise, like be a critical friend to the council and the council's operations and even arm's length bodies and and so forth. So um, it, 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 it's it's not a doing or delivering. And it has no particular oversight over delivery of a particular uh, plan. Indeed. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Nice to see you. Sarah, hi. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Sorry I was a little bit late. I'm in another meeting, so I've just skivvied into this one. So apologies. Um, just on the point before from a farmer update, um, I am Sarah James. Uh, we have set up um, the equivalent of the Farm Herefordshire Hub. Um, and we are going to be Farm Cymru. So I will be sitting on this um, board with regards to representative from the farming sector. We're not a union. We are a sustainable land management partnership. So as a farmer, um, we are speaking for the farmers um, 
and the actionables that can be done on farm um, as best practice. So once I'm up to speed, I will be able to give you an actual farmer's update. But just so that you're aware on the Welsh side of the border, there are a lot of new regulations with regards to the nutrient um, NVZs. Um, there's a lot of new paperwork coming in. There's legislation that NRW are um, going to be enforcing and inspecting on farms. So there is a lot going on um, around the subject. So I will be able to update you on that as we progress. Thank you. That's great. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Catherine? Thanks. Yeah, that, that just reminded me. Um, one of the things we didn't put in our um, uh, our report back on, on activity in Monmouthshire County Council um, was working with um, Action on Climate Emergency in Monmouth. Um, who came up with an initiative, I know, um, uh, Chair, that you, you're aware of this, came up with an initiative to um, bring in um, a specialist on regenerative farming, who happens to be a Herefordshire farmer, who you all know well, um, uh, to mentor um, local farms. And there was enough funding to bring in three local farms to be mentored. But perhaps another interesting aspect of that, uh, which we've built up, which um, officers in the council working on the food partnership have picked up on, is to bring it, is to share information across a much wider group of farms. Um, and there's, there's, I think there's over, I can't remember the current number, but there's over 100 who have engaged with that. So it's, a, I've always struggled since I've been in this role with how on earth do we resource what work we can do as a council to, to work with farmers because it's it doesn't fit easily in any one of our core services. Um, yeah. But thanks to this initiative from the voluntary sector in Monmouth, we've, we've, this, this idea evolved. It's a way at least we can share information beyond what obviously the regulatory agencies and, and organisations um, such as Farming Connect are doing in terms of, of direct expert advice. So it's an interesting concept. Yeah, no, it is. It's very good, and I'm and I'm very keen to get a similar thing. It seems very ironic that <laughs> that this very good project in Monmouthshire is using the 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 the, the skills and knowledge base of a Herefordshire uh, farmer, um, uh, but in Herefordshire we're not doing the same thing. It just seems slightly bonkers. Um, so we'll keep you know, learning I mean, really like to replicate it on this side of the border. Same, you know, a, a similar um, project, but um, we, we we seem to be struggling to get traction on it. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good thing. So well done to you and and the and the voluntary sector in Monmouthshire doing that. It's great. Okay, right. Have we got any more? Anyone else want to say anything to update? Or any comments or questions on the updates? Okay. All right, we'll close that section off. Go on to agenda item four. You, you will have seen the uh, client agreement from Lawyers for Nature. Um, obviously, at the last meeting, we'd agreed the principle of asking Lawyers for Nature or, or, or you know, <laughs> gratefully accepting the help being offered by Lawyers for Nature to, um, uh, to, to, to help us navigate the business of a seat on the board for the river. Um, now, this requires that they have a client agreement. Uh, Heritage Council cannot be that client. And, and logically, the board cannot be the client because the board is not constituted in such a way as to be a, a client. Um, so, therefore, the easiest way, we, we, we think, is for me to be the client. So I will take on any uh, personal liabilities that accrue to the signing of this document, and there will be no liability to individuals or organisations on the board. Um, but that, but lawyers for nature and Paul Powell said that it, it, they need to know that the board supports this, so that that we have a written record of the board being broadly in support of this, uh, of me signing this document. So we need to have a good, clear minute that we are broadly in support of me signing this document. So uh, Henry, however you care to minute this. Um, Please, minute. If, does anyone object to the signing of the document? Or me signing the document, obviously. Jackie. I don't object at all, Alyssa. I just wanted to clarify that you really are happy to identify yeah, yeah. yourself in this way. And just to check with you to make sure that uh, there is some cover for you somewhere if, if ever there needed to be through the local authority as a, a local authority member, which there, there there is cover if you did something really awful. Really loopy. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm 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 very confident that that um, lawyers for nature are not are not 
<laughs> came to, uh, uh, you know, come at me with a huge bill. Uh, oh, that's, that's great. I, I'm very happy to support that then. I'm very happy to put a, a nice big bold in the minutes to say that I'm happy to support that. Thank you. Uh, okay, does it... Is every, can I assume that everyone else is broadly in support? It's nobody, nobody, uh, no voice has raised an objection. Okay, David, in answer to the question that you put in the chat, there isn't a cost. The the liability is should we overrun the parameters of the of the help that they're offering, then there would be a, a cost for which the person signing the document would be liable. But no one else is liable. The board isn't liable because the board isn't signing the agreement and individuals on the board are not liable because the board is not signing the agreement. I am in my capacity as me. Okay, any more? Are we all okay? Good. Henry, are you happy with that as a minute? Yeah, I'll put it as a unanimous agreement. Okay, that's great. Tar very much. Um, Right, we also now need to progress the idea, and I think if we keep progressing it incrementally, meeting by meeting, we'll be doing this until we're all old and grey. So I'd like to uh, just get a steering group up and running, communicate with Paul that we've, that, you know, we're, 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 the agreement's done and we can progress. So we're looking for people to be on that steering group. Um, and I would like to feel that the steering group could bring nominations or at least a good scope of nominations to the next meeting. Does anybody want to volunteer to be on that steering group? Working with Lawyers for Nature to explore personhood for the river and a seat on the board for the river. Okay, Jackie. Yeah, Andrew. I'm almost almost trying to keep my mouth shut, Alyssa. <laughs> almost. But I'd be really interested in this. Don't um, volunteer for anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as long as I'm not going to lose any money over it, but I don't think I will. Right. But yeah, okay. I'd, I'd, I'd be quite keen to support you on this one, having said that I support the whole process. But I'd like to see mm -hmm. this and how they work, um, because I think there could be some interest in some of the other rivers as well. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, I think the USC is interested in it. Yeah, well. yeah. So, um, you know, it would make sense to kind of uh, twin track with them and have a conversation across the, across the table with them. Uh, Andrew, is that a yes from... That, that's both personally, but we'd also like to commit CPRE Herefordshire to supporting the whole aspect of it. Okay, that's brilliant. So, and Sarah, James, you up for it? Or, you, or would you have a comment? Well, well, let's, 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 let's... Sorry, pressing the wrong oh, button. That's okay. <laughs> um, uh, yes, if appropriate, I think um, I should, yeah, try to, from a farmer's perspective, be involved in as many yep. discussions as, prop as, as possible. Great. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's great. And Christine? Uh, yes, I, I think uh, on behalf of CPRW and Friends of the Upper Wye, uh, I'd be happy to take part in this. Brilliant. Okay, that's brilliant. So let's take it as that's our that's our core group. We've got uh, Councillor Charlton, Andrew McRobb, Sarah James, Christian Hugh Jones, and myself. Great, brilliant. We'll take that uh, take that forward um, once we communicate with Paul Powson and let him know we've the, the document is signed and that's our core group. Terrific. That's great. Um, okay, agenda item nine, number five, mitigation for housing in Powers and Monmouthshire. Um, this is something that came up because obviously we, we, I want to make sure that we our conversations are as even handed as possible. And therefore, I want to know what is going on and what can the board do to facilitate mitigation in Powers and Monmouthshire. Um, has anyone got any updates or anything that they would like to bring to the board regarding that? Catherine. Hi, yeah. Um, so in, in Mama Show, I was having a catch up with our planning colleagues about this, um, just to confirm my understanding. So in terms of new housing development in Mama Show, um, in, in Wales, we need to meet NRW requirements for nutrient neutrality as part of the planning application process. So 
I was a bit confused at the suggestion that we need a separate mitigation strategy, but I'm sure um, POWIS colleagues and NRW people will, will be able to explain this more. Um, but also um, Welsh Water have included in their asset plans now phosphate stripping solutions for wastewater treatment plant at, at, at our two main towns where we have preferred sites in in, for our draft um, replacement local development plan, which is Nabagavani and Monmouth, in relation to the SACs on, on USC and, and the Y. Um, obviously, there are issues further down the Y, which, but that, that's not within the um, phosphate um, sensitive area at the moment, closer to the seven. Um, but um, so I'm not sure. And also, the housing growth proposed in our draft um, replacement local development plan is being reviewed and accepted by NRW and Welsh Water as not having a harmful impact on water courses. Um, and they'll continue to assess proposals as they develop. And obviously, when you come to the point of full planning applications, there would then be habitat regulation assessment on each site in, in much more detail. So I don't know if that answers the, the question sufficiently. Yeah, it, well, I think it's sort of, um, yeah, I mean, I think we, we're all in slightly different boats with this and, and it's and it's just making sure that we're cited on each other's issues and, and you know, where possible, you know, to be able to lend a hand and support and or, or if there's a question or some understanding that needs to come about or that that, 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 that can be explored here and now from the Welsh context, the Welsh point of view, because because we because we're very often looked at the, you know, because we, we have, you know, different, Issues. I have it has a kind of perfect storm of issues uh, around this. Yeah. Um, so I just thought it'd be really in interesting and, and good to hear from the um, from the Welsh authorities. So Jackie. Yes, actually, I, I really welcome this, Alyssa, because I know we're having some very deep conversations at the moment and Peter will be able to give you the technical data on this. I, I'm not um, so good. And we also have Ethan Hammer here as well, who um, is is um, checking all this out as we go on a day to day basis. But from a political level, there are real frustrations around not being able to put housing developments forward is creating a massive problem for us. Um, specifically around economic development, because if we can't build houses, we can't develop our economic plans and strategies. We will, the Marches partnership is to be signed, and I think we've got joint meetings coming up fairly soon. Um, I'm hoping that that actually will give us some impetus between uh, understanding the different issues on each side of the, the border between Wales and England. Um, but I think we have specifically, and um, I'm, I'm kind of washing out our dirty linen in public here but our leader specifically lives right on the uh, Welsh English border in Clyro well he lives in he just outside Hay really um, and he said he's he's constantly frustrated to see housing development going on on the Herefordshire, Herefordshire, Herefordshire side of the border but not on the Welsh side of the border, where we desperately need housing. And one of the areas we really are concerned about is our social housing, because that's that's a real blight on some of our areas um, around that border area. So um, you've asked if I would share things and I'm, I'm sharing it, but that's a real frustration for us. And I know it's a frustration as well for NRW, and I know they're supporting us and they're trying to do everything that they can to help us to move this on but it is a massive issue. And that's the impact of the phosphates in the river. It's not just the health and um, the environment around the river. It's also that economic development, which is having a massive impact on us. We have asked questions in um, of the Welsh government. One of the questions that was posed at the meeting that the first minister held um, a couple of weeks ago, which wasn't we, our, meet, our question wasn't read out, but we've had a response to it. We know there's work ongoing, um, but I do think it's important that we share that uh, and we just let you, you know, let you know what impact it's all having on all of us. I think it's an important element to to put forward yeah. to the NMB. Yeah, I think so. I and mean, I think that again, so the nutrient management plan has a strand, and we'll discuss this a bit later. But the, the strands of mitigation versus the the, the what they call the fix the river strand. Um, so I think it's it, it, you know it's really important that we keep in focus the, the 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 mitigation on both sides of the border and what the obstacles are and where you know where we're having successes and and where we're struggling. Yeah, so and, and I think I think coming back to that mitigation as well, it's the cost of the mitigation. Yeah, the cost of that mitigation is so high that's yeah. what's creating problems. So we might get 
licenses we might get the planning permission and then there's the mitigation bit which is that going to be put in place is the money available to do that can we look for money elsewhere and i think that's a, a good conversation maybe for us to have here okay and have you have you got the um because obviously what heritage has done to to you know to to, to at least create a breathing space um you know is the, is the wetland scheme yes um, and that requires a, a, a agreements over who's responsible for discharge and um and 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 all that and the and the, and the very sort of licensing elements of it um so whether or not there's something to take from that for Paris I think Peter's got his hand up and I'd love him to come yeah. in here because we've had yeah. conversations around this I can't I can't find the button for hands up so I'm having to do but that you're sorry your actual hands up I can't see it Apolog <laughs> yeah apologies yeah I've no, lost no. the button <laughs> Uh, but no, just really, really timely. I, I could see sort of across England, um, DLAC has put a grant uh, funding uh, scheme together. We haven't got the equivalent yet in Wales. Um, it would be great if we did. So I'm sort of keeping an eye. This is all this sort of learning going across the on across the UK and England within catchment. So what what are, what are they all doing? And they are developing mitigation strategies as local planning authorities to help development. So I know Herefordshire is certainly doing that and it's in your update around the wetlands. And I think as local authorities across Wales, I'm looking to see what we can do. So any suggestions here is very, very much welcome to us. Mm. Ethan is having a look. I put it in our update. We're beginning to have a look at sort of public sector package treatments. Um, and we think there are potential opportunities out there. Early days of discussion um, at the moment going on there. We want to have a look at land drainage as well and see whether there's some solutions within that. Mm. But I, I'd really welcome anybody's thoughts really from the board around what extra things or, or even if there's some, some, some obvious things that we ought to be looking at. I know I'm speaking for Powys, um, yeah. so that's in particular what I'm interested in. But I think it's what can we do in addition Funding is going to be key here. And as I say, bring, bring, bring us back to where Councillor Jackie left us. I think that is critical. How do we, if we've got to put a wetland together, where are we going to raise the funding for that? Um, that that's a real biggie for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks, Peter. Thank you very much. That's great. Mary. So I could talk about mitigation and credits on the kind of ethics and the practicality of it for weeks, but I won't. I need to say it's really interesting to get Jackie and Peter's perspective. Obviously, I go to the Welsh um, developers seminars as well. Peter, you see me there. And I we build border oak, build both sides of the border. And actually, Jackie, I can build in Wales a lot more easily than I can build in Herefordshire. But what we should all be worried about is how much easier it is to build anywhere else in the United Kingdom than it is to build in the Lug and the Y. So that is a problem because you're draining money out of your own areas and it's jobs, it's money, it's housing, it's infrastructure, it's all those things that Jackie mentioned. Um, it, you, we can't keep going like this. It's five five years, really, since the moratorium was taken, and we're still no further on. Mitigation, such as wetlands and septic tanks, they're expensive, they're very slow. But also, it kind of embeds the idea that it's fair and right, which I don't think it is. And if we're going to say that mitigation is needed in long term, we're basically saying that the catchment is going to fail long term. We shouldn't need mitigation. We should have a thriving catchment in ecological terms that doesn't require my sector to pay you tens of millions of pounds just to be able to do my job. So those are, there's loads of other things that you could spin around mitigation, but I would say to people, if you are going to have it, it needs to be quickly delivered and at a price point that means you're going to get the betterment. Otherwise, developers go somewhere else. It's just how it is because it's not viable to lose money on projects um, and make it sustainable. The, one point I think we might miss, and maybe it's an action for the group, is that Welsh Water, since the first plan in 2014-2015, were kind of, um, their nose was held to the stone and they were forced to commit to hundreds of millions of pounds of phosphorus reduction within our catchment. Now, they have delivered almost all of what they promised, with more to come. So the action the board could do is look at how much phosphorus Welsh Water have reduced I believe it to be around about 23,000 kilograms in the last amp alone. They're ahead of schedule, so they basically delivered all of their upgrades they promised us. 23,000 kilograms is a huge amount. So A, it should be an action that we quantify in the plan. 
But in Herefordshire, for the next 10 years, we need 800 kilograms to release all of the housing. So if you look at the scale of what they've done compared to what you need, and I imagine Powers is probably going to be 200 kilograms, something like that, to meet your housing needs. The Welsh, the Welsh Water Company have already provided the capacity for you guys to enable your housing to go forward. And that was why they were told to do it, because they had a problem with the previous nutrient management plan. So they were asked to do this to release housing. They did it. And yet the people who got the blame and the kind of restrictions were the people who deliver housing. It doesn't make any sense. So I, I would say if anybody wants to have like an actual full discussion about mitigation in terms of the impact of it, whether it's sensible, whether it's affordable, what we can do. Peter, I'm happy to run through all the things that um, the Herefordshire builders have, have brought forward and explain what they've done. That's no problem at all. Uh, but I think we also need to flip the perspective that we're looking at it through. And is it really worth losing hundreds of millions of pounds every year through the kind of strangulation of a sector that was perfectly fine and not polluting? Um, and do or do we look at fair share and the threshold of significance, which were two principles I was given back in 2019 by the agencies as something that would be looked at? And it's never been looked at. Yeah, I, 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 I would have thought the threshold of significance and fair share should be a thing myself, but uh, Catherine. Yeah, I think Mary's covered part of what I was going to say in addition. For, for us, the game changer over the last couple of years was Welsh Water bringing forward their AMP in that way. And the fact that we were focusing our um, plans for, for development on those main towns um, where they are progressing that. I, but I would love to, I would love to learn more um, and share knowledge um, with other authorities, and, and including in the, you know the, the type of things that Mary's been talking about about how we deal with smaller settlements where um, Welsh Water are not going to be coming to to those sorts of treatment plants until much later on, um, because I think obviously with those smaller settlements there will be much stricter limits, and it becomes incredibly expensive to develop anything at all. Um, and I mean, for us uh, as an administration, and um, to pick up on what um, Jackie Charlton was saying, social provision of more social housing was was an absolutely crucial issue. And we've we've put in our draft local development plan um, a more ambitious uh, balance on that, um, as far as we were felt able to go. And we've we've had viability assessed on it, and and we're kind of yep, that's just about possible in that we're, we're pushing for 33% social housing on our um, new major developments um, and 17% in addition to that of so-called affordable housing. So only 50% market rate. I mean, there's still people who are doubting whether that's possible, but you, you know, viability, initial viability assessments are, yep, you can. Um, so that, that, I know that's a slightly different issue from what we're dealing with here. Um, but it, the, the overall for, for acceptability from the public in our towns, that is part of the, the question. Um, and the other bit is that the phosphate stripping promise um, does deal with current problems as well as the new housing. And there was certainly a reaction initially. How can you build any new housing until you've solved the existing housing um, input to the river? So the phosphate stripping, I'm, I don't know if I'm being naive, <laughs> thinking yes that's that will answer that issue in these in in these two towns um and it remains to be seen just how effective it is but yeah yeah well, i think but i mean hopefully some of this will we'll, we will see um something come forward the, the agenda item 10 um the the the, the decamry uh, collaboration proposal on phosphate reduction um so i'm really interested to to get to that bit of the agenda and see uh you know how how we can collaborate to uh, to deal with particularly those sorts of cases that you're you're talking about. Um, just one really quick thing, Alyssa. Just yeah, to speak, so for Catherine knows exactly the kind of predicament that the affordable housing providers find themselves in. So yes, they've been caught with the um, kind of requirement for mitigation in Herefordshire, but they have also because they're in the towns primarily because that's where affordable housing is best located they are able to kind of rely on um, a much lower amount of mitigation because they're working through sewage treatment works often with permits and um, restricted output of phosphorus. So Lempster, for example, 
But the problem has been the slowness of delivery meant that a scheme that was financially viable to deliver and fully funded by Homes England in 2019 is not fully viable and funded by Homes England in 2024. So the, the costs of construction have almost doubled within that period. So it makes the mitigation doable, but the amount of time that they spent, they're now faced with the idea, do they drop the project? Because Homes England obviously want homes built, but they'll go to Worcester, Shropshire, yeah. anywhere else. Or do they build less affordable homes? But to me, mm -hmm. neither of those are really good answers because 55 affordable homes in Leominster are not only needed, but they are hundreds of jobs. So the, the kind of mitigation isn't just the only kind of issue that you have around crediting for, for development, yeah. but small schemes, Absolutely. affordable schemes, yeah. anything onto a permit um, or with a phosphate reduction that's already been implemented to me, you guys should push it all through and let the government tell you that you shouldn't have done it. I think it's fine. Everywhere else is doing it. Okay. Thanks, Mary. Uh, okay, that was a, that was an interesting chat about that. And so we'll probably go back into it when we get to the um, De Cymru uh, piece towards the end of the agenda. So we've got now agenda item six, Welsh Government funding update. Uh, can I call on Ben Boswell? Because um, I think we, there were some questions just, just so that everyone knows where everything is for transparency's sake. Um, Ben, are you, are you on the call? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Swinghurst. Yeah, over to you, so, um, Yes, I think the request here is just to have a lot more transparency of the funding, isn't it, really? So in terms of the money received from the Welsh Government, because Heritage Council is the accountable body, so we've had two allocations to date. So there was one in 22-23 of 40,000, and that was used for capacity building, stakeholder and feasibility work uh, on mitigation schemes in Powys, as well as uh, funding some legal opinions on the on the plan and border protection zones. So that was in that was 40,000 spent in 22, 23. Uh, last financial year, we had a 70,000 allocation um, and that was split in two. So what half of that to be officer time support to support the, the plan and the tag, uh, of which we've not needed to draw down all of that. So I think we're currently finalizing the claim, but that was looking at utilizing 27,000 of the 35 there. And the other 35 was around capacity building work um, in, in Wales, and there was three parts to that where Farm Herefordshire were doing the work. Um, two parts of that have been complete, and unfortunately the third one wasn't able to complete in time. Uh, so at the moment we're looking to spend, I think it's 14,800 of that. Um, I am in discussions with Welsh Government about the third part though, because we're still keen to, to do that. And so um, they've, I'm currently in the process of asking to increase the allocation for this year. Um, and on the allocation for this year, there is an allocate, there's an application at the moment for 70,000 to commission a consultant to help refresh the, the plan. Um, and we're just currently waiting on the funding letter for that. So as part of that, that will be the 70,000 for the plan and then an additional sort of 11,700 to finish the work that we were looking at doing this financial year. And unfortunately, just due to the timescales of when we received the grant and able to commission it, um, that last piece hasn't been completed just yet. So we're just in discussions to continue it. Does that help to give people yep, pleasure? Great, thank you. Um, okay, we've got a couple of questions coming in. Sarah James, Sarah. Hi there. Um, that money pot there that you've just been talking about, that farm Herefordshire, was that the de delivery partly of Farm Cymru? Yeah. 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 Brilliant. So that um, that is the only pot that Farm Cymru is accessing at the moment. Um, and I'm not sure if Kate has reapplied um, for the new financial year's sort of tranche of money that we would like to help deliver um, the Farm Cymru and look at how we can get involved more with the plan, if you like, but just so that you're all aware of that. Thank you. OK, thanks, Sarah. Do you, do you know, Ben, have you had anything from Kate? Speak I, haven't had anything, I haven't had anything asking for anything new. Um, as I said, I have asked... Welsh Government, if we can have that additional to continue the work into next year, but I, I'm waiting for an answer on that, which I'll, I'll pick that up with, with them. Um, but if there is an ask, I guess it needs to, needs to come yeah. forward. And it, it, yeah, so, so you, might, you might want to get Kate to... Yeah, yeah, I I have been chasing. I have yeah, I have had a missed call from her today because I've been chasing her this week because we obviously right. would like to put a bid in for slightly more um, in this current financial year than we did in the last. Um, request if you like because 
we were unaware that the application was for the previous financial year, not the one that we're now entering into. So we'll obviously be able to deliver a lot more moving forward with a full year ahead of us rather than sort of having approval at Christmas and delivering um, by the end of the financial year. So um, okay. if it's there for us to utilise, then we'll certainly be asking for some. Thank you. OK, thanks, Sarah. Uh, Catherine? Um, yeah, it was more a question around the sort of governance aspect of this, that um, if I've understood correctly, this is Herefordshire Council applying for funding to Welsh Government for um, work for, for on behalf of the NMB, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just that we've never seen any of this application and had no input to to the process at all <laughs> unless I'm wrong and um I don't you know I don't want to be difficult but um it, it would it's slightly embarrassing for us in Monmouthshire to not be able to be accountable for money spent by Welsh government um on the NMB and also you know there may be things that we could um, have some input to and and wish to see spent obviously in Monmouthshire yeah. um positive action on on the water quality of the Y done upstream is a huge benefit to us. So I'm not quibbling and saying we want the money in Monmouthshire. Um, I want the money for the Y and it has a positive effect as, as for us as well. But if we could be um, more engaged in the process, it yeah. would be helpful. I mean, this, 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 is, this is money that, I, as far as I understand it, was for Welsh Government to support the uh, the establishment of the nutrient management boards across Wales and the, and yeah. the plan. Uh, it's not to support particularly actions um and i think that had I, i'm going on memory but i'm i'm reasonably certain when it was first mooted that, that we had said who wants to make the application and 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 it was herefordshire who who did it because i think there wasn't particularly enthusiasm anywhere else to do it um because it takes time and capacity and all the things that you know about so herefordshire did it um, but yeah, I, I think fair enough that, that, you know, and in a sense, that's why it's here today, you know, that, so that we yeah. are all cited on it and we can all have a view on it. But the, but the, as I understand it, and I see Emma's got a hand up, the, the principal purpose of this money is, is about supporting the plan and supporting the board. No problem. I understand historically, and it's not a criticism, but if going yeah, forward, no, that's fine. Be, but I'm, not, I'm all for, you know, clarity. I'm, I'm Thank all you. for get, getting it out in the open. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. Sure. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so it, we'll come on this SOG update, Catherine, but the, the last SOG meeting, there was quite a bit of discussion about this. And I think the development by the Council of Ideas might have slipped because of personnel changes because Rachel has left. Yeah. But Liz Dubley made a commitment at that meeting to look at how the funding had been spent. And there have been some one to one conversations with NRW and with EA about how that money could be used to develop and explore actions on the Welsh part of, of the Welsh bit of the nutrient management plan. And I don't know if, if Martin or Claire want to say anything at this point, but um, the very sorts of questions that have just been asked here were raised at SOG and Liz made a commitment to come back in the next one to report and do some thinking in the meantime. Okay, uh, Ben? Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, I mean, I'm obviously liaising with, with Liz on, on that as well. And I think the idea was to put this on as a standing item potentially so that we can have that transparency of, of this. So, um, yeah. I think there's com uh, comments in the chat about a written update. I mean, that's, that's yeah. simple to, to do. Yeah, you're picking up on the chat comments. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay. Good, good, good. Thank you. All right, any more on that? No, excellent. Okay, so agenda seven, which is the SOG report, which we had appended. It's, it's, uh, it's under um, agenda three, but it's the... Uh, the slideshow, the slide deck. Slide deck. Yeah. yeah. So is, I'm is, I'm chairing is. this at the moment. Um, it will rotate between EA, NRW and, and Natural England. So quite a few of the members of SOG have already provided updates. So I wasn't going to go through those unless yeah, people no, have questions fine. they haven't asked before. Um, Natural England have got some updates of our activity there, which is mainly, well, is all around advice and support to farmers, but also to the responsible authority that is Herefordshire in terms of their local nature recovery strategy and also the landscape recovery schemes. Um, the bit that um, Robert, uh, somebody's already picked up is, is the key points that we agreed. And I just wanted to talk through those. They've just disappeared from my screen. So we've already talked a little bit about the, the task and finish um, group that was looking at tools. 
um, the work has been paused because what has been looked at, which has been going on in pool, is not directly applicable to the why. Um, and DEFRA are also commissioned some studies, so it seems timely to wait till the conclusion of theirs. Uh, I'll just pause there and wonder if anybody wants to ask any more technical questions, which I'm hoping Martin might field, um, or have got any questions there at this stage before the next item. Mm, no. Okay. Um, the outline table for the diffuse water pollution plan, um, the fact that the alignment of this and the refresh of the nutrient round plan was discussed at the previous board, EA have provided an indicative timeline. So Martin, I think it might be opportune for you just to talk us through that now, if that's okay. Yeah, happy happy to, to, to cover that now. Um, in terms of, I think this probably overlaps slightly with the next item in terms of the nutrient management plan, but I'm happy to go through it and then we can perhaps pick up any gaps. Uh -huh. So what we discussed in the last meeting, and, and the, the same applies this time, is that the diffuse water pollution plan, which came out of a 2015 judicial review, so it's a non-statutory document, but we are committed to producing this plan, is in progress. The conversation that we had last time is around this quite a long length of time since that requirement came about to where we are now. But the good thing is, is we've got the funding and resources and an and expert that, that's working o o on this document. Now, in terms of, OK, they are very high level because this is an evolving process. So we've got the same teams in other SAC catchments across England and there's a lot of new people in post. So some of this is evolving in terms of that sharing of, of knowledge, but also in terms of doing the modelling and the various updates uh, at, at one stage. Consequently, when we look at whatever we put into a diffuse water pollution plan, part of it is modelled to so you using the various models that are available to calculate sort of land use and impacts on water quality, but also real life in terms of water quality data. So it is very specific to, to catchments. Now, the, the process for, for it, this is for England, is that our diffuse water pollution plan will be the update of the nutrient management plan. So, so it's essentially, there won't be two documents. The diffuse water pollution plan is effectively the same review. Now, what is different in terms of um, perhaps the previous reviews of the, um, the nutrient management plan that I think we talked about happened, I think it was 2021, is that the modelling has uh, developed further, but, but also we bring in a, what we call an options appraisal. So we will we will look at how we engage in terms of of of, of that options appraisal, but but what we essentially we do is we look at what the current measures are in terms of reducing phosphate to a level to meet favourable or the river target. Then we look at what that gap is. So so what does the Welsh water upgrades mean in terms of phosphate reduction, like we've talked already, and then what is the gap that still remains that also covers the drawdown. So what at that catchment level is the gap that needs to be achieved in terms of diffuse pollution predominantly from that. In terms of our request, what we have asked is, we've asked for it to be done in at a sub catchment level. So rather than taking the whole body of the wires one, we've asked it to be split down. So we'll have some data for the frume, the arrow, the lug, as well as the main body of the Y. And the reason why that's important is because the Y itself is close to, but it's not failing its target. Whereas we know the sub catchments are, which links to the downgrading of the river by, by natural, natural England last year. The, the other thing to point out is that the diffuse water pollution plan should provide greater certainty than we've had previously within the nutrient management plan. The the challenge has all, always been in terms of the science. So what, what science have we got? And sometimes obtaining new science is quite complex. The, the, the diffuse water pollution plan will consider things like the refocus studies. We are working with the refocus team on understanding the role of legacy, legacy phosphate. So that work's still ongoing now because we know that some measures will take time to, to, to see 
um, a, a change. And, and essentially what that leads to then is an options appraisal leads to the actions required to, in order to, to, to mitigate those, those, those um, reductions that are needed to meet that target. The early indication, I think, is probably in terms of the data is very much similar to what we see in the current plan. So what we, we know is, is that the pressures within the catchment are in the upper reaches. And that's partly why where we target our regulatory work and, and our engagement, we tend to still focus a lot of our time around around the lug, the arrow and the frome, because we know that's where we need to 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 push the regulation and our, our, and our work further. Martin, great question in the chat from Christine Hugh Jones. Does this mean the DWPP will be concerned with phosphate alone? So what the diffuse water pollution plan is, it looks really at the reasons for failure. So so it'll look at why isn't why isn't the SAC meeting the, the target? So predominantly for the catchment, we would know that it, it's phosphate or phosphorus if you look at the elemental um, side. The work we do within the catchment isn't just looking at P. So we will look at nutrients as a whole and the measures that we are put in place will also look at those other nutrients. I know, Christine, you raised about biocides. It won't necessarily stray into that area of work, but that's where I think we need to understand what the current thinking is and where we are with, with that, that part of water quality mon monitoring. But, but certainly it does look at the wider nutrients, albeit main focus will be on the reasons for, for not, not achieving the target, which will be P. Okay. Also, there's a, it's a similar uh, extension of the thought from Simon Evans. Diffuse water pollution includes condensed phosphorus, ammonia, and DIN soil loss, pesticides, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and other. And, and I think the answer to that is probably similar to, to what I just outlined. We, we do need to look at the synergy between the Y catchment plan delivered by the Y catchment partnership yeah. and the diffuse water pollution stroke nutrient management plan. Absolutely. Because whilst we recognise one is specific to a plan, I think we need to get better at making sure that they are more holistic as documents so we understand where that blend is together. They mm. probably up until now, they're almost more discreet and distinct, but I think there's an element with both documents being reviewed yeah. and Simon's nodding that we try to make sure that we've got really good alignment between those documents. Well, Simon and I are both nodding. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh my. Yeah. It's really important. Yeah. I think you know, we have yeah. to align with the with the, ca the catchment partnership and the nutrient management plan. Have to have uh, uh, nutrient that, that that they've got to be part of a whole. Otherwise, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, so, at, at some stage, just to sort of conclude, our specialist is working on this. I will will ask him to come and talk to you all. Mm. Um, I've I've. He's got the, the depth of perhaps some of the questions you may have in terms of knowledge. By all means, approach me outside of this and I can ask anything technical. Yeah. But okay. I will at some stage, we'll get him to come along and he can talk talk through it a bit more in terms of some of the work that we, we're doing and some of the outcomes we're finding. I've tried to sort of keep him away because I think it's really important that we get on with this work and the indicative timescales I've provided. Um, we, we are fairly confident that we'll we'll meet that march um time frame but recognize it's iterative so effectively it will be part of that that continued review rather yeah. than we produce a document and there it stops and dare i say it again the the part of the reason has been about resources and the good thing is we have got the resources at this point in time okay that's great thanks martin uh katrin and then simon uh, Simon can probably answer my question. Um, okay. but, go, um, Simon, to go first. <laughs> get the timing right. Um, to what extent um, is what you're doing there on the English side of the border covered also on the Welsh side of the border? Um, and to what extent are you liaising with NRW to make sure that it is? Uh, basically, are we constantly, are we covered yeah. on both sides? Thank you. Yeah, no, it's a good point because the DWPP is, uh, is an English thing, isn't it? Sure. So probably let Simon. Anne come in on the Welsh side and on behalf of Simon, the, the Y catchment plan is, is a catchment plan. So that does, does cross the border. So um, the, the, the the reason why the DWPP, Diffuse Water Pollution Plan for the acronym, 
it is specific to England because it came from a judicial yeah. review specific to, to to England. So that that's the only reason we yeah. talk about it. For, but, for but, the, but the plan, but you can't say so there's not an equivalence between the DWPP and the Nutrient Management Plan, is there? Because if the DWPP is only for England, then it cannot be the Nutrient Management Plan. But in, in many catchments, you don't have two. So some yeah. catchments will have a diffused water pollution plan, but they won't have an existing nutrient management plan. So effectively, you start yeah. off with the one but we plan. we have to have a plan for the river. Not yeah, absolutely. Just... Hence why we're quite keen to stress that the DWPP will be a review of the nutrient management plan for England and not a separate standalone document, because effectively it will meet the same objectives. Yeah, but it can't just be a nutrient management plan for England. The river also. No, no, of course not. And I think that's where yeah. Anne's going to come in and, and, and yeah. talk about yeah, that. That's the well. However, you figure yeah. that out, that is yeah. we need to keep Absolutely. that in focus. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> Um, I don't yet have full sight of where WCP sits in this whole process because we've got a we've got a task of of reviewing and revising the um, Y catchment plan to make it real, to um, basically look at determine what the quantum of the issues are, determine when the investment needs to go in, where we still need to determine the quantum, to de determine in terms of outcomes the efficacy of, of historic projects, of existing projects, and then work out through systems mapping and through um, new science what extra needs to be done. Um, that is a, is a wider body of work that's going to report this summer. So is that going to subsume a diffuse water plan i mean how, how, how the timings of this just seem i'm trying to work out what the timings of this are well i think at, at the end of the day some of the timings are you know what they are we can't help that you know it, it, and there's no there's never a point at which everything stops you know i learn you know everything continues to roll forward our learning projects delivery outcomes it's a it's a constant sort of you know moving pavement of of, of stuff um so I don't, I don't think there's any kind of perfect moment to do this. And actually, this may be as good as it gets. In other words, that, that it can start to fold in to the thinking of the plan, both plans simultaneously. And that's that's yes. me as the ACME, is that the, the Y Catchment Partnership Plan and the Nutrient Management Plan uh, evolve together. There's a duplication of effort here that surely can be um, simplified to make it more effective if you've got two sure. organisations working towards the same objective. Surely yes, we can pull resources and make about, it better. Yeah, so this is about the authors of the nutrient management plan working in, in close collaboration with the Y Catchment Partnership. Partnership so so yeah. that those elements of the Catchment Partnership plan that relate to the nutrient management plan are one and the same rather than yeah, okay. duplicated, if that makes sense. So it's, well, yeah. Welcome that. So, I'll yeah, shut up I, well, I think so. I mean, I think we, you know, we're all on the same boards. We all, we all you know, but that's sorry to jump to in. That. That, that's partly why I, I think we need to understand how they blend together because quite yeah. quite rightly what we we don't we, we're developing two things at, at the same time that they are looking at different things but also similar things on and yeah. Simon we'll have a chat when, yeah. when well, I'll see you next and we'll yeah we'll I think that's that. that's exactly the point and, and that's why, you... why my offer is around yeah. we need we need to bring in our specialists to the same conversation yeah. And, and it would be wrong of me to mention that whilst the EA are leading this plan, it is joint with, with Natural England. So yeah, um, it, it does so, cover that, any as as yeah. a, a key contributor. So, yeah. So, so the point would be, I guess, that, that the catchment partnership or, or the or the people on catch, looking at the catchment partnership plan are cited on the development and drafts of the nutrient management plan. And then they can take from that. Hopefully we just wind up with a you know a, a bit that's the same in both plans instead of two separate strains of thought which i think are going to be very difficult for everyone uh emma well actually no i was i was going to kind of come on to the next bit and uh, answer andrew so i suspect that Anne weedy and yeah. mary might want to follow up on this point okay Sh shall i come in and just pick up the yeah the, the question about the welsh why or the welsh bit of the why um so obviously um so Martin's spoken there about um, a diffuse water pollution plan, which will also double up as the rewrite or review of the nutrient management plan. You know, we, the, it is one river. We need to have a single plan for the entire river. Obviously, we've got different organisations that will feed into that plan. And I don't want to kind of preempt what, what we're going to be talking about at the next item when it comes to that rewrite of the, of the nutrient management plan. 
but th there is some work going on in Wales around developing nutrient management plans for some of the other failing sac rivers that we've got. And I think it would be a shame to not benefit from some of that work on the why. So I'm quite keen to make sure that the why is linked in to that development of those other Welsh plans. And 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 yes, and we when we have to, you know, obviously we will we'll work with Martin and the EA and Emma and on Natural England side to you know to make sure we do develop that that single document. But I think we're going to come on to that that piece that 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 piece yeah. in the next item. So I don't want to preempt it. No, that's fine. Thanks, thanks, Anne. Uh, Mary. Um, one practical question: What do we call it if it's a DWPP MP M M P PAP? What, what, what do we actually call it? So otherwise, I just type a lot of capital letters in my mind. It, it'll be a nutrient management plan because okay. we, we're, we don't perhaps want to get hooked up on. We call it DWPP yeah. because it, it because that's the, the the name that came from the consent order. But yeah. it's a bit immaterial in terms of. I think we would probably just stick to the the, the common terminology, yeah. which makes sense. I was only going to I was only asking Martin because obviously a diffuse water protection, uh, water pollution plan, kind of um, then. Uh, excludes the Welsh water side of yeah, and, and the and exactly so the conversation. The DWPP, the yeah, sorry, the DWPP does include the Welsh water contribution. So it's right, not okay. just looking at diffuse from agriculture; it's also looking at the yeah. the Welsh water yeah. contributions yeah. and the upgrade works too. So yeah, you're, so your legal obligation is fulfilled because you technically have a DWPP. Mm. But then that would go back to Simon's point about how does the water catchment plan sit into it? Well, surely you've got no option but to produce the DWPP. So then the water catchment plan could then absorb that into its um, kind of mechanisms afterwards. And then it becomes an all catchment plan, doesn't it? Because the water catchment plan is the only cross-border plan. But if the DWPP well, yeah, the, the, is acceptable, you could drop it into the water catchment plan. The Y catchment plan deals with a, a load of stuff that isn't within the nutrient management plan because it's not nutrient. So there's, yeah, but that doesn't, so it's, that a doesn't matter, it's a does section. It? But the, I think the, the, the answer yeah. to this is for um, Martin and the team developing the uh, but, nutrient management plan to be yeah, a very yeah. close collaboration with the team developing the, the Y catchment plan. But, but Simon is right. The DWPP, as far as I know, has to cover other things, not just phosphorus. So yeah. it's a diffuse which, which water it will pollution do. plan. Yeah. So if you've covered those things, it's legally compliant. It can drop into the white catchment plan. Yeah. Then you're left with the DEFRA plan. And I don't know how that would then dovetail into either of them because well, it's definitely another English centric proposal. Who knows? <laughs> um, but I, just to reiterate, I mean, it probably is the next agenda item, but it worries me that because we've had such a long period of time already, what do we do with the intervening 12, 18 months? And, you know, technically it could be continue to get worse making the plan obsolete before we get to the point that it's adopted. So I do worry about that, but I like the idea of subcatchments, Martin. I think that's a very clever way of um, mm. dividing it because people have a sense of identity with their catchment and you can kind of really get good work done because nobody wants their patch to be the bad guy. So I like that. Simon? Um, so the only thing I would add is that um, a lot of these issues are holistic and interlinked yeah. so if we are looking for example at algal blooms as the symptomatic um, issue of water quality then the the feedback loop on algal blooms is, po is populations of ranunculus in the river which are in part being driven by excessive high flow but in part being limited by excessive high flows so it's it's very difficult to have one single plan that can solve the problem unless you can bring the whole holistic thing of how you manage the catchment and how you manage everything within the catchment together. And the beauty of this is that you can have, if you pull two levers um, in different areas, you can actually have a really big impact in a different area. So it, it's it's like you can, if we think of the catchment as on a holistic basis, we can actually solve it relatively, sim well, not relatively simply, but actually there's a clear pathway to sort of solving a whole gamut of the problems that you don't see if you are just focusing purely on diffuse water, on, on water issues. That's my, that's that's what I'm trying to get across, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Simon. Uh, we've got Andrew and then Emma, but then I'm going to draw a line under it because it's nearly half past three and we've still got quite a chunk to get through. 
Uh, th thanks, Chair. Um, I just wanted to add to, to Simon's point. It appears to me that the Y Catchment Partnership um, are doing an enormous amount of investigative work, which is way above my pay grade, um, and they're looking very holistically at the problem. Uh, my question, I guess, to to um, uh, everyone is: surely that uh, investigative work should feed into the DWPP. Uh, because it's way above anything that I've seen from any other source. Um, so I just like to question: Is that being used? Because if it isn't, I think it most definitely should be used, uh, because that would help formulate the DWPP, the M, uh, the Nutrient Management Plan. Um, and there's an enormous amount of money being spent on it. Why not use it? So I'm going to jump in here because I'm just conscious of the agenda. We are using every bit of evidence and data that we can grab hold of, Andrew. So, and I think there are there are lots, there are quite a few plans, but there are same bodies and people that sit on those, and they talk to each other increasingly. So now we've got the governance in a much better place. So those links to um, Martin's team, Martin's colleagues who are writing the DWP, the links with Simon, the links with ourselves and NRW, those are continually, you know, there's a lot of talking going on in the background. So I'm feeling confident that we are all pooling together what we know to actually make this happen. So I, I just wanted to bring us back to the SOG update and also to say, we are developing plans, but in the meantime, we're not sitting on our hands. You know, hopefully the update that we will have in a combined document next time illustrates there is a lot of work going on between the statutory organisations and also the partnerships. So I think we just need to clock that um, it's not happening as fast as we'd like. And there are lots of reasons for that. The plan will come out next year. But in the meantime, we are pedalling as fast as we can to improve the catchment and improve water quality. And just to pick up your uh, question, Andrew, yes, you're correct. We will not have a revised nutrient management plan until I think the EA's timeline is, is March next year. In the meantime, the SOG has agreed at the last meeting that we will do a progress update on the actions in that plan. Um, and that is something that somebody in my team is kicking off and it will go to a, 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 a simplified action list will go to the people responsible for those actions, basically to bring back to this board, not to say how they've got to change or to review them, but to say, give an indication of, yes, that one has started, that one hasn't, that one's complete, that we don't know about that one. So I appreciate that is not an updated nutrient management plan, but it will be a stock take of what progress has or hasn't been made since it was written in 2021. So that was the, the last bit on the SOG update that I wanted to make the board aware of. Okay, that's great. Um, could somebody pick up the question from Sarah James in the chat, please, about who else from the agricultural sector has invited to sit on the board? Um, Okay, that's great. Should we should we just sort of segue into number eight, which is the update on the current plan? Which I, I'm that. not going to go through in detail because frankly we'd be here forever. But I just wanted to remind everyone that we've got an action plan, a you know, tabulated action plan. And it would be useful if all members of the board who have actions within that plan could update them. But what I'm not clear on is who's actually got access to the document to do the updating. So I think that that's the, the action that I just mentioned is that um, the SOG have, have, have basically commissioned and asked for that update to be done. So it would so be. You need to, so you need to. So can we ask now all members of the board who have an action within the plan? We will be right. We will be sending out to you. Yeah, we will be writing we will be out going, to you with right, a okay. template of some sort that says, "Can you report on where you are with these actions?" Yeah, because because I think a number of them have 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 concluded. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and, and could be greened off. Yeah, um, yeah, and likewise, whether or not there are actions, you know, because I know we have another thing coming forward, but at the same time, we want to keep this rolling. So if you've got yeah. actions coming forward, and I know there are members of the board in the meeting today who have got actions within their organization to that will deliver on objectives of the plan but they need to go in the plan so it's not only saying what we've got in the plan has it happened have you got something that you're doing that should be in the plan and some yes. of those are already very, very far advanced it's just that 
the plan has become a kind of thing sitting around in a yeah. dusty shelf. Yeah. And, and we're keen that there's the an update on it. it. Yeah. Was that it would be dynamic and iterative, and therefore there needs to be a constant flow of information through it. Mm-hmm. Um, if if we can do that, I think we will see great things. Uh, because I know mm-hmm. there's a lot of activity going on. It's getting it all into a place where we can yeah. look at it. Yeah. And and uh, and then we can truly see the. the, yeah. the and I think we'd, we'd also happen. like to use the SOG update as a means of also kind of highlighting it because action yeah. plans can be a bit wieldy to read through. And then not everybody's cup of tea. Well, no, exactly. You know, well, exactly. As you say, have to have some sort of straightforward rag rating. Yeah. You know, this is this. This is the person doing it. This is when they're going to do it by. This is why I do it. You know, off. And and then and then we get a sense of the, you know, actually that things are happening, which I think would be um, good for us and good for uh, for everybody else as well. Um, and, I, and I think okay. Well, if if if, if, if I'm basically good with that. Sorry, Anne. Sorry, so just very quickly, I was just going to say, I think that light touch kind of review of where we got up to with that, what we call the phosphate action plan, that 2021 yeah. document, will then inform what goes into that next document, which is that new nutrient management plan that we were talking about producing. Absolutely. You know, we, can't, we can't produce that without knowing where we've got to with this. Yeah. And so absolutely. much has moved on since 2021. Yeah, absolutely. But it's kind of like a rolling start, isn't it? You know, you yeah. can start, keep, keep going, and go, oh, there's stuff that's happened and there's stuff that's still going to happen, there's stuff in the pipeline, and then... You, they will naturally then feed into the next um, iteration, which I think would be really, really useful. Um, so that's great. Okay, well, if, if we're, we're all kind of already focused on that, let's not go into it again. Um, I was going to say, this is just a thought for the plan, you know, potentially, um, which is that we had this problem with post the Dutch cases about the plan as mitigation for the... Um, for housing and and the, that requires then the reasonable scientific certainty which give, which gives us a problem and it would be i think probably an, a good idea to consider twin tracking the plan so that we've got actions with reasonable scientific certainty and then actions that are of of lesser scientific certainty uh, but which nevertheless should be in the plan if that makes sense that we have a kind of a two tier or twin track or however one cares to express it um, as a thought. Uh, okay, right, good. But right, Christine. Well, is it just that there are reasonable scientific certainty in advance or that they can be seen to be working as you go along? Well, in order for in order for the plan to function as mitigation, which was its original you know, function, um, the, the action, the, the, the originally it was enough to say you've got a plan, it'll all be fine by 2027. And now the post-Dutch cases, that's not um, sufficient. So there's mitigation, the plan has not worked and therefore, uh, hence we've got the moratorium and issues. There's still the hope that the plan would act as mitigation at some point in the future, but you need to have reasonable scientific certainty. No, no, I, I mean, I understand. Before, of the action, taking... of the action in the plan for the plan itself to be mitigation. That, that's all. So I'm just saying that we have, if we have two levels of plan, we have the mitigation level, which has to be reasonable scientific certainty. And then we have the fix the river level, which which are actions of, of merit. And, you know, and as far as possible, that we, that we can monitor and evidence the outcomes. Does that make I, sense? I, I... I, I understand the implications of the Dutch case, but surely the certainty comes from seeing that things have worked. Yeah, eventually we'll have a so picture and then if, it will if, be good. You know, yeah. if, if we're looking at, say, a wetland and we've already got one and it hasn't worked, then we can't... You know, that's a bad example because let's hope they yeah. will all work very well, but... Uh, but then you can't really use this uh-huh. as a as a kind of indication of certainty for another one in the future. It's not, yeah, but it's a di- it's different functions for it. To be fair, I mean, I'm only floating it as a as a suggestion. It's not me writing the plan. It's the it's the agencies writing the plan. But I'm just kind of aware that we've got this kind of these two two areas that we look at mitigation and fix the river and how they work together. You know, in a plan was my thinking so um yeah sorry didn't mean to ramble on about that thanks christine (laughs) uh right okay good 
that's that. Um, so let's move on to, we're all happy with that. No one's got any more to add. So we're on agenda item nine, which was the Welsh Government SAC Action Plan, which was appended to the uh, to the agenda. Uh, and this this was just a table of, th of things. Obviously, that's all Wales, all SAC. So there's a whole lot of activity there, which is not specific to the why. Um, there was one thing, which is um, 5666, Welsh Government will work with existing groups, including Wales Land Management Forum subgroup on agricultural pollution to encourage innovation and achieve measurable outcomes in reducing excess nutrients in sack rivers. Um, and then and then they were saying that there was a, a visit to farms along the Y to explore opportunities to improve decision making to address the causes of pollution. And I was just curious to know, is there any more detail about that work? And um, but, and and also, how do how does the this group get cited on that type of activity rather than have to wait till you find out about it in the uh, Welsh Government summit? Uh, Liz, you've got your hand up. Yeah, sorry, no, I wasn't going to answer that question. I had another question myself, so I don't know whether you want to wait until somebody else answers your question okay. about the citing. I'm guessing this is an NRW thing. Uh, um, well, it's a Welsh, it's a it's a Welsh thing. Whether it's NRW or you know Welsh government, Welsh local authorities, it, but it is a good question. And 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 you know sometimes you know I I sit and sort of work in the ops yeah. side of NRW, and we've got some head office policy people uh, that, that 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 are speaking to Welsh government. So sometimes. I'm not. I'm not fully um, connected mm. to, to to everything that's going on on that all Wales no. uh, level. So, so, so it's a really it is a good question or a good good you know a good point to raise, Alyssa. And I think you know it's and I don't know whether Peter is still on the call. I know Peter, you're you're you're, you're quite well connected to some of those um, all Wales sort of Sack Rivers groups. Um, you know, and and whether I I wasn't aware that that visit had taken no. place. That's, any yeah, that's what I thought. This is this is either. really that there's some activity happening somewhere in the Y that we're not cited on, that you're not cited on, and the board, and we should be cited on it. Yeah. So somebody somewhere over there needs to be just gently reminded that um that we're a thing and uh, and also uh the the as the your bit of NRW needs to know what some other bit is doing yeah. if it relates to is your it, catchment. Yeah. I'll, so I'll take that away. I'll listen. Yeah. Is that is that okay, Anne? Just to give him a sort of a gentle nudge over it and say, come on, yeah. you know, just, it, would, just, it would help if we knew what you were up to. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know either, Councillor Lisa. I don't know what yeah. that is either. It, it what whilst I've just read it again, potentially um I know there's that they keep a website of information. So I could probably find it if I went delving. Um it's also okay. one for maybe Sarah James to have a look at how do you make links with that forum. And yeah, what is the, that the Wales Land Management going on? Forum subgroup. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's another sort of little pocket of activity that it we're is. not we're not entirely cited on. Yeah, um, Liz. Yeah, so it's just picking up. I suppose I had two questions. My second one was linked to that point, actually. Sarah, I just I just wondered how you were linking across to this because I read this and it's very much Welsh government, you know, Farming Connect, et cetera, working with the unions. And I'm not quite sure where Farm Cymru and your expertise and what your dynamism you're doing actually reads across mm -hmm. to that. So that was my, that was my second question, but that would be my first question. And I also one, uh, just, just could somebody say, what, what's the state? Just now of the um the, the Tusk and Finish report on nutrient trading. Has that been published? Is that in the public domain? Because it was report it's reported, hasn't it? But I couldn't find any yeah. reference to it. And, no, Peter, you're not you're shaking your head. So uh, it, it, it hasn't. Um no. the Welsh government led task and finish group. It I'm not on it, but um Gail um I've got, I've got a surname, Dr. Barrel, uh, no, Davis from Walsh. Carmarthenshire, Ta okay. Ta Taylor uh, Pierce, yeah. is it? Yeah. Um, oh, yes. She was on that group. It's been submitted. I think the changeover in um, First Ministers has held sure. it back, so we're all okay. waiting to hear. Okay, that's great. We're going to have a side to that. But um, the first question linked to what Alyssa was saying about this this link between Farm Camry and uh, and and this, the Welsh mm. Government action planning. So, yeah. yeah. 
I think to to be fair to Sarah, uh, Farm Cymru is a is a is a new, you know, it's 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 just finding its feet. So, um, but it's, it's very useful for them to connect up with um, other groups, and I think that would be probably part of the work going forward. Sarah, yeah, um, I suppose my mission by the end of the year is to be on everything and just be death by committee and meeting it, <laughs> but. I think it is joining everything up. I think this. Yeah. Uh, I've I've already been involved, um, sort of within my own capacity of my own time to be as involved as much as I possibly can in different things to do with the river, mm. um, and the sector. And it concerns me greatly that I'm kind of the only representative of the agricultural sector sat on this meeting that I can tell from today, um, and I just sort of Farm Cymru has been born from my personal frustration as a farmer and a free range egg producer that the industry doesn't seem to have a voice or a sensible uh, conversation channel, shall we say, with everybody else. And the mm. unions, by default, I don't think are doing a good enough job for the industry and the sector in particular um, to be part of these conversations in a non-political but an action-based way with an action-based mm. outcome. Because I think a lot of the conversations that I've been involved with on the sidelines so far are fantastically ambitious fantastic that those conversations are happening but the actual actionable outcomes might not be coming to fruition because nobody's engaging properly from the agricultural sector to say well yes that would work that's not going to work the barriers to that moving forward are this this and this and I think we Farm Cymru is the link that's been missing to make sure this action can happen and happens quicker mm -hmm. because I think there's a lot of talking there's a lot of good things being said or being proposed but I think because our sector is not engaging properly, it's becoming a brick wall rather than a channel to move forward. And I think that's my frustration. So I'm hoping that Farm Cymru will become that sensible conversation conduit to actually make things happen rather than come to it from a political stance or have a negative conversational point on it and be more engaging with everybody involved with the river. So that's the lobbyists, um, those that are trying to do for their sort of side of the story I've got really good connections with the friends of the upper Y I've been talking to them for a long time now so I think it's about that engagement that perhaps hasn't been happening until now um, yeah. and we are brand new but I am going to move very quickly this year and just so everybody's aware I do work for the CLA three days a week um, so I will be going back to them now and asking why and who was supposed to be at this meeting and why they weren't present um so I think there's a lot of conversation to be had internally within the farming sector to make sure people are taking this seriously and actually coming to the table with a helpful sort of um, viewpoint rather than a politicised one. So that's where I stand. Thank you. OK, thanks very much, Sarah. That's that's brilliant. And it's great that you've taken this on, really. It's uh, it's it's fabulous. And, and, and we do, you know, we do have on the board the NFU CLA Farm Herefordshire. Um, so you know and yeah it's just getting them more involved i think because yeah. nothing's going to move forward without the land management ownership Agreed. actually committing to doing the actions that we're all talking I about think, i think we can all agree on that actually yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm here to try and mitigate some frustrations i think great. um because they all sit at the table for farm cymru so we are a sustainable land managed partnership and all the stakeholders are invited to sit at our table to be part of that conversation yeah. but we are going to be pushing hard now to move things forward in a quicker manner and more actionable best practice yeah. like well, we, Farm we, Herefordshire we, we, has. We, we very much welcome your, your input. That's no, well, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks Sarah. Okay, right, so uh, should we go on now to um, agenda item number 10? Oh, I'm going to ask who from uh, De Cymru is, is going yeah. to speak to this. Uh, um... I'm happy, Dan. <laughs> All right, okay, so, Dan. Hi there. Um, yes, I'm Dan Humphreys, uh, Dura Cymru. I'm um, in covering Jenny Grubb. Um, she had a baby back in January, so I'm in her role uh, currently. So uh, <laughs> uh, we basically kind of gave a commitment last year to try and release um, data and details of potential sites uh, where we will be doing schemes in AMP 8. So that's our investment cycle, 2025 to 2030. Uh, that would have potential collaboration opportunities to add wetlands on um, at the back of the treatment works. Um, 
there's been a screening process basically just to determine kind of which sites would apply you know and kind of what what would be possible um as you spoke about at the start of the meeting you know kind of there's been a few trial sites already kind of up and coming in the hereford herefordshire catchment uh which is great um so we've got a list of another four sites basically and i know some progress has already started with uh, Herefordshire Council with one or two of these sites. But what we wanted to do was uh, put it out there kind of and so that Welsh Water could remain impartial in terms of where the, where the, where the collaborative site and where the third party organisation would take on the ownership of the wetland and create it and be in, you know, irresponsible for it. Um, making sure that it would be, the not the well the NMB I suppose would pass on and kind of have a collective approach kind of of the whole catchment as to who might be best to actually carry on and and do that work. So so I've sent over some guidance details of what was formed from last year. Uh, the four sites we have are Cannon Pyon uh, Wastewater Treatment Works, Dilwyn, Little Dew Church, and Willope uh, Village. And I've also got then on the call uh, Ryan, who's our growth development manager, and he's uh, he's quite experienced. And uh, yeah, kind of these are collaborative opportunities at the moment, and obviously, kind of it's just a case of discussing with us further um, how things could progress from there. If I can just add to that, Dan, obviously, yeah, just in terms of uh, Tarrington as well, which wasn't on wasn't on our list. Tarrington was also one which. Has been approved by our internal uh, drainage policy group, so that 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 works is also on you know included on that list. So I think in terms of that, when the heads of terms need to be finalised in terms of the final effort and transfer across, uh, but as I understand, everything's progressing well on that one. Um, just in terms of the detail that Dan Dan shared uh, on the on the email link, Dan, which uh, I think the detail is probably in that collaboration guidance in the appendix. Uh, there is a there is a, a collaboration guidance note with a attached form, which obviously needs to be filled in terms of, you know, progressing any any wetlands on the other four sites. But if you want to have a, a discussion, uh, any of those, then obviously Pete, please feel free to just contact myself or Dan and we can we can discuss um, discuss your 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 actions. Thanks, Ryan. Um yeah, so just just so everyone knows the role of the nutrient management board uh, in this is uh, well, the first port of call for mitigation proposals. We act as the catchment mitigation approver, balance competing needs, determine betterment commitment per solution. So, for instance, we take Luston, the twenty percent buffer, um, and 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 we're and we're an, uh, an essential part of the process. Um, Simon. Anne and David might be able to correct me if this has changed, but as I understand it, the issue there's there's a fundamental problem with wetlands that the amount of water that they discharge means that they need a, basically an installations permit, um, and therefore we've got around this problem in um, in England with a regulatory positioning statement from the Environment Agency um, that allowed for the wetlands to be owned by a third party, in this case Herefordshire Council, for those wetlands. Um, in Wales, um, my understanding at the moment is that they are being treated as tertiary treatment and therefore they have to be owned by the water company. Um, there's no opportunity for a third party to own them. And it seems nonsensical that we are running once one regulatory framework on one side of the border and a different regulatory framework on the other side of the border, which is fundamentally limiting the ability to solve the problems in Wales. And I would just like to air that formally here. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Simon. Um, have we got any anyone who can kind of clarify that position? Um, I think um, even if it's a third party ownership, Simon, that's that wouldn't remove the requirement for um, a permit. I don't think so. I need to go. I need to go back and have a re a re read of the policy, the NRW Sorry, policy, sir. Simon. Um, um, I've not read it for a while. The, the point here is that the 
um, it would have been very difficult for a third party to own it in England because of the permit. And the, the, the situation was resolved by a regulatory positioning statement being developed that okay. um, the permit would um, not be applied provided that X, Y, Z and M were, were met and were monitored. And um, there has been a reluctance um, to um, mirror this approach to solve the problems in Wales. And I think this is, is not just here, it's also um, causing the ones in Cardigan to fall over and basically it's, it's causing a, quite a few to fall over. So there are still opportunities of doing a little bit better with Dua Cymru where they are or where, where they're using, where, the, where they are treating and um, you can clean a little bit more out. But for some sites, it's um, where there isn't this this investment happening. It, it's making it prohibitive because it means that um, the third party, be it the council or be it the um, uh, or be it a, th a third party, um, has to have a installations permit. Okay, I mean, I, you know, I'm aware we published our policy. Um quite a lot of effort and, and, and advice was sought to, to come up with that policy. Um, I'm going to have to take that away, Simon, just to see where, whether or not there's any, any consideration of, you know, um, following a similar, um, a similar route that the environment agencies um, followed. I think that'd be really worthwhile. And I mean, if there's, yeah. if there's an obstacle here on the Welsh side that doesn't need to be there, then it, it, it would be okay. smart to identify it and, I'll, and, I'll and see what the project. Done. Yeah, it's okay. Thanks. Uh, Nia? Yeah. Hello, all. Welcome. Hi, yeah. Um, sorry, just taking a second to unmute. Um, just to say that um, I was in a meeting today that had an LRB representation on this um, thing exactly. Um, we are hopefully getting a statement to clarify what was said in that meeting into something that we can um, discuss, um, mostly because um, I don't think any of us wanted to just rely on our notes um, on, on their own, because it's really quite technical, a lot of the stuff. And I think one of the, it's not so much the tertiary ownership, which is what I thought going into the meeting that was the problem, but it's also around the fact that to have the wetland coming off a, a wastewater treatment works um, kind of passes that permit for the wetland onto the owner of the waste of, of the of the wetland then from the so it's to do with that and it's to do with um whether NRW feels comfortable about that but what so that's not really the full update but what I can say is that yeah. when we get that statement we can make sure that it's then kind of made available or that we can share the information in that statement um yeah. through yeah. to that's great to kind I of think the why and the ask is, yeah this is one of those things that we want to keep an eye on um you know and just 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 if if there's some an obstacle that we can identify and help even as a board writing to Welsh government or the all the regulations say so come on yeah it would be helpful if you yeah. if you didn't have this problem then that would be uh that would be well I think it was something the Welsh government was looking at because they they referred to uh something around a flexible regulation or whatever and I think, I'm pretty sure yeah. that that was about looking at this problem that's been created by uh a, a, a too rigid system for kind of innovative solutions and the, and and it's getting them to run together. I think um, that one of the things that came out was potentially that that position statement isn't going to change massively. So that's just something to bear in mind. But there might mm -hmm. be ways around it still without yeah. the position statement changing. So it, and I'll try and keep um, as okay. abreast of that as I can and and share Brilliant. when when updates. And, and I can let you know who it was that we spoke to if that's useful for you internally as that's well. That's really good. Thank you. And if there's, if it's at all possible to share that a copy of that summary of that issue, that would be helpful for me as well. Yeah, when it comes through, I think there will be a little bit of time coming through because of because of the request. Then, um, then I will definitely. Right, Martin has posted the um, the solution that has been used in Herefordshire in the um, in the chat. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Simon. Uh, ben. Um, to be honest, Nia said what I was going to chip in with really. I was on the same call this morning. It was a very helpful conversation and we'll follow up. So. Okay, uh, that's but great. Yes, like, like, like you. Sorry, I'm jiggling along there because we're going down to our last five minutes. And still got I'll be really quick. Things. So one of the barriers to wetlands being more widely implemented could be that in the Y, you'd have to provide 80 years of mitigation certainty, whereas everywhere else in the UK in a protected failing catchment under the Leveling Up Act would have to provide six years. So if you're looking at kind of passing on ownership either of the waste or the land itself, there's quite a big difference in 80 to 100 years commitment and six years. 
So I would say that if, if we can work on why the government won't include the why in the levelling up um, act, then you could then perhaps have a lot more wetlands doing a lot of work for less time um, while you bring on stream other bigger, more sector specific, sector specific actions. But currently yeah. we're stuck with this great big lump and thing that nobody would want to take on because you'd be mad to take on 80 years of commitment, says the lady who bought wetland credits as soon as they came on the table, but desperate times. Okay. Uh, no, that's a really good point, Mary. Um, I don't know quite who, who can take that on and maybe see if there's some way we, we should at least raise that with government. Um, if so. The official line of literature is that they are aware of my concerns. Oh, great. Well, that's good to I was know. In the, I was in the same letter that they declined a meeting with me for a date I hadn't set saying that their diary was full that day, but I hadn't given them a day. So It's good to know, it's good, yeah. good, isn't it? It's great. Um, so, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take that away and, and, and see if that's something that we might want to fold into a letter from the council when uh, we next write a letter to the UK government. And well, Welsh government should do the same. That's what I'm saying. So just because yeah, well, maybe a devolved nation, maybe, uh, yeah. Could the other local authority members consider that a conversation with Welsh government? D devolution is not supposed to disadvantage any nation over another. Mm -hmm. So we are actually in a quirk of devolution, like a crevice quirk. So we could all work together to do that. Would be smart. Um, okay. Uh, right. Uh, okay, Jackie. Just, just very quickly, Councillor Lisa, I think there's something we could do together so we've got a consistent Absolutely. approach. Absolutely. Maybe we'll yeah. pick this up with the Cabinet Commission. What do you yeah. think? Right. Yeah, yeah okay. you could do. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Henry, can you minute that as an action for the Cabinet Commission? Thank you. All right, good. Um, so that's great. Thank you for the document. I think uh, Heritage Council needs to sit and cogitate on this document because it's lower Y uh, STWs um and um we'll see what we can take forward and thank you very much it's, it's a it's a really good thing um sarah hi there just um to let everyone know i think it might have been mentioned before there was something went on that nrw were involved with um i had been invited um by farm herefordshire to be included in some meetings that happened in um monmouthshire um I think she might have dropped off. She drops out of the chat, uh, out of the meeting. Oop. Well, there we go. Shall we move on and then hope she reappears? Any signs? No? Okay. Um, I'm going to move on, but if when Sarah comes back in, she can pick up. Um... Oh, actually, before we move on, um, do, does, does Welsh Water need anything from the board right now this minute? Or is this is just letting us know where we sit in the process? Sorry, apologies. Oh, sorry, you're back. Hi, sorry. <laughs> um, we were involved in some meetings that Welsh Government and um, DEFRA and NRW, um, and I think Welsh Water were there as well. And it was a meeting that um, I think Kate was hosting, Farm Herefordshire hosted, and the conversation was about the phosphate research on the Y across both borders and with both governments. Um, I was late to the part. I was late um, to be invited to the party, so I wasn't fully aware of the purpose. But it was around phosphate research at a government level. So just to make this group really aware of that had happened, um, they were in Herefordshire and in Monmouthshire with farm visits and talking about soils um, and the outcome is to to have a phosphate research done at government level but I'm not sure nobody seemed to have the money to pay for it but there was a lot of scientific talk about it and how we can move forward and, and mitigate some of the agricultural sector's contribution shall we say so just to make you aware of that and I'll try and find out more and I'll send some information um, yeah if you would so about that what that brilliant. what the purpose of that was and what the outcome was of it because that was about a month ago that we were involved in that so just okay. to sort of make yeah. this group aware that there are other conversations like we were saying before that are going on that perhaps this group needs to be aware of that's very helpful thanks Sarah because because you're right some, sometimes it is just a communications uh it can only help um, yeah yeah I'll find out more and I'll let you know what that was and 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 who's yeah. to report back on um like you say the siloed working of each department not sort of marrying up that that's involved in what we're doing as well so I'll I'll find out more and let you know 
Okay, that's brilliant. Um, right, so we're getting everyone's now deserting us because we're running over time. Um, agenda item 11, DEFRA plan for the Y. There isn't one so far. We wait with bated breath. If I was holding my breath, I'd go blue and uh, get cyanosis and die. So there we go. Um, it's still somewhere. It's, it's urgent, of course. It's somewhere in a pipe, somewhere. God knows. Um, Andrew. Jamie, anybody? I, I, just, I just wanted to Andrew, pick up on, on, on one point here, and, and it, it is pertinent to the fact that we haven't got a DEFRA plan. Mm. Um, I come from a commercial background, and if I was facing a crisis so, uh, or, uh, uh, of what I consider to be the Y catchment, um, mm -hmm. we would take really quick action on many things. I've closed factories, I've made people redundant, I've done all sorts of actions because the success of the business long term has been put in jeopardy. Um, now, I appreciate that that probably is not the way of government or, um, you know, the, the, the agencies that we've got. But that's the reality of the commercial world. And the second aspect of that, which I think we could apply, is that if we were looking at something that had a crisis 18 months down the track or we were waiting for a plan 18 months down the track, we would set up a task and finish group to look at how we could speed things up. Um, we wouldn't accept that we couldn't bring these dates forward. Um, and I'd just like to leave that open to everyone. I'm sure the agencies won't like it, but that's how what happens in the commercial world. We wouldn't accept that things couldn't be done until next spring, summer. We would find, get a, an emergency group together to say, how yeah. can we bring these things forward? And I'd just like to leave that for everyone to cogitate. Yeah, fair point. I mean, I think to, to, to be fair, the agencies who've been on the call, um, that, that they are not the people writing the plan. From from the answers to the public questions, it would seem to me to be that's the case. Um, I think that there may be. I mean, I'm perfectly willing as chair of the nutrient management board, if it is the will of the nutrient management board, to write to Defra um, and tell them to, you know, get themselves organised uh, and and get the plan to us um, if that is the will of the board. Well, it's not just the, that plan, but it's the DWPP. It's everything. How do we speed well, this? Well, the DWPP sits, sits with, 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 you know, we've got a timeline for that. We know when that's happening. Um, Elisa, that's, I think you're missing my that's, point. That's, the timeline that's is, the thing. That this, Elisa, this plan, the DEFRA plan, is eight months overdue. I agree, but you're right. missing my point. The, 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 the DWPP is 12 to 18 months out, and I would find that unacceptable. How can we speed that up? What help yeah. the... Well, you'd have to you'd have to ask it. the you'd have to ask the agencies who are writing it that question. Um, well, that's why I've just asked the question. I'd say you had to find the magic wand. There we go. And uh, it's uh, it's a political decision to do with resources that we locally do not have any control over or, and very little influence. Well, we we you do know, have influence because we can complain. And, the and board I, can, I, yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so yeah, here's the, the agencies. <laughs> Is it the um, will of the board that the board writes to DEFRA, this is DEFRA in both instances, isn't it, Emma, to say not only could they get a... Well, possibly Welsh government as well, plan, isn't it? But yeah, also and Welsh that, government, because I think sure that, we, that, that you have the right resources to expedite the DWPP. But it's possibly, I don't know if Anne's on the call, but I, I think NRW are probably in a similar position. Uh, well, we so write to the Welsh government as well. Yeah. Yeah, it can only, um, can only help your guys' position if the board have asked for more resources and a, and a shorter time frame, can't it? So it's, there's no harm asking, even yeah. if the answer is no, we don't have a magic wand. I, I would be, feel more comfortable, especially with people looking back on what the board was doing, to write to DEFRA, even to write to the SOG and to Welsh Government to say that we would accept... Um, well, that we expect a shorter time frame, more urgency, and in the interim, an emergency... Um, special measures position where certain things can't happen while we're waiting for the plans, which bearing in mind the plans will bring forward actions, we then have to deliver the actions, which will be another set of years down the line. So I agree, as a board member, I would feel more comfortable to have asked the question and be turned down than not to have asked the question. And I feel it supports the agencies, not undermines them. No, I don't feel undermined at all. Uh, I understand people's frustrations. Um, yeah. Right, so to write to the, U the Welsh and UK government to properly resource 
uh, the agencies uh, to develop. To express the board's concern, Alyssa, so not just ask for resources. And we've done this before, but we need to say they've, they've we've been told the length of the time frame. We need to express concern, disappointment, and if you want, abject fury. Okay. Um, but I have you to take particular okay. wordings. You've got to email them to me after the meeting. Um, and 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 just going to say now, has anyone got an objection to this as a course of action? Speak now. Good. Jamie. I, I just, I sorry, this was going to be what was kind of be said. I mean, I, my two penneth worth would be uh, to lead with the specific disappointment about the plan not being delivered. Uh, the rest you could you know, communicate. I think, you know, we're all well aware, you know, um, there's a sensitivity, but leading uh, officials publicly now communicate they haven't got the resource. So, uh, yeah, uh, as is comfortable for colleagues. But yes, that would be great to do. Uh, I would like to suggest that you press release it through the council's okay. communications. Um, uh, and then it's on the record, isn't it? Job done. Thank you. Right. Good. Fine. Thanks, Jamie. Catherine? I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Everything that Mary said and, and Jamie then. And you could um, use the fact that there are new secretaries of state or new minister in Wales and new secretary of state relevant to, I know it's not that new secretary of state, but um, compared to the last major conversation and promise about yep. it. So in both cases, the fact that then you introduce us as this cross-border a multi-agency group and our determination to to achieve something so that would be really worth doing thank you okay that's all right i will draw something in. if anyone's got any particular words phrases or inspiration please feel free to email it to me uh so that i can include it um right awesome um any other business we we did have a note from the last meeting to um elect the Ranger Wildlife Trust and Farm Cymru, Sarah's been with us, woohoo. Um, thanks very much for being here. Um, I, do, do we have Radnishaw Wildlife Trust? Is James in the meeting? I can't see because it's um, on. No chair, I can't see James no. in the meeting. Okay, but, but do, do we, theoretically, are we happy with, um, in, enlarging our membership to those two organizations anyone got any problems all right let's do that then uh and then finally i think uh, andrew did you have something for any other business um only uh, a, a very quick update uh, something which um, simon will be aware of is that there is a new initiative called um mud spotter um, that uh, we hope to be implementing throughout uh, much of Herefordshire. Um, I'm not sure if its application is in Wales as well, although I think it will be because it's on some of the Welsh rivers, um, where we're wanting to um, use citizen science to survey where mud and silt is coming from uh, uh, and where it goes directly into rivers or directly into drains, because particularly in parts of um, uh, Wales, uh, the turnip uh, fields uh, are washing a lot of um, soil into uh, the, the rivers. Um, so that's a, a new initiative that's been trialled in uh, the uh, Buckinghamshire, Berkshire area. Um, I attended a, a day's training at WUF, and I think it's a really interesting, uh, it's, there's still a lot of work to be done on it, but it's a really interesting initiative. It's about photographing, uh, giving a location, and just finding where all this um, uh, 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 topsoil is actually getting into the watercourses, and we all see it everywhere now. That's good. That sounds very interesting. Okay, so the next meeting I've got is the 18th of July. Is that still the 18th of July, Henry? We haven't not clashing with catchment partnership or anything. That's that. That's that's the next meeting. Yeah. And do you suppose there's any hope that we might become um, do that in person? Well, I'll send out the invite to be both in person and on the, the aim is to have it on Microsoft Teams um, so that we can then have that hybrid approach where we can okay. do both. Um, All righty. So, that, so just, just forewarned is forearmed. This is my intention to uh, to get us back to in-person meetings or hybrid meetings um, for the future. Yeah. Uh, hopefully that will suit everybody um, and give us some, some more time for water cooler conversations and whatnot. Okay, and that's it. Sorry we've overrun, Natad, but um, thank you all very much for 